one of the strength of LinkedIn is like the value you can get for free is massive. For someone to find a job, it's kind of like life changing kind of situation, right? So you can actually get a job for free on LinkedIn if you are doing the right things. And that's pretty much set up for your life or financially or whatever. The value is tremendous and you can get so much for free. Welcome to the show, Guillaume. It's great to have you. I've wanted to bring you on to the Kelly Lumber podcast since I first saw you speak earlier this year at the British Business Group, and I absolutely loved your presentation. Can you give everyone a little bit of a, a backstory as to who you are and the path that you're on? Yeah, sure. Thank you for inviting me first. It's a pleasure. My name is Guillaume Laronde. I'm French. I've uh, been in Dubai in the UAE for 11 years. My career uh, started in sales in the UK. I worked at LinkedIn, so that actually tra- you know, made me kind of go to from the UK to France, and then that led me to Dubai. I founded a company called Extra Mile, and I basically help uh, businesses and executives with uh, LinkedIn. So whether it's B2B marketing or B2B sales, I help their teams um, you know, achieve better results uh, with LinkedIn. I love LinkedIn as a platform, yet I still believe it's one of those platforms that people still think it's for finding a job Mm -hmm. and I find that frustrating from a personal branding perspective as someone who's worked there and seen the evolution of it what's your thoughts and take on that and how do you respond to that I'm helping businesses and and people for you know many marketing and sales Um, but it's true that for example like last year I went to a a LinkedIn workshop and it was uh, primarily focused on that like, you know, developing your, your profile for your career. So it's true that it's been kind of an, a never ending story when it comes to LinkedIn and educating the uh, people on the, you know, on how to use the platform. It's true that the number one, let's say, main reason why people are really joining or realizing the potential of LinkedIn is about the career, but there is so much to it with, you know, for executives, for finding investors, for finding clients, obviously for advertising. There are so many ways you can leverage LinkedIn. So it's just people stumbling upon it or depending on the specialty, whether they are in HR or finance or, you know, VC or CEO, they would use then they start realizing the potential of the platform depending on their roles Mm -hmm. or their business. But it's a kind of like long, long journey. Usually that's true that the first step is usually related to HR or, you know, finding a job. Yeah. What would you say to someone? I mean, sort of in this perspective of, is there space for everyone to be on LinkedIn? I think there is. Yeah. Because obviously, even in your in your career, um, you go through different stages, right? Uh, you might be looking for a job at the beginning, or you might have already a job, or you might be set for life, you know, based on if you're owning a business that is successful. Yeah. But um, so, but you can still use LinkedIn for finding partners, hiring. So whatever your role, you know, any organization and any type of organization, there is definitely a value that you can get from LinkedIn. And certainly, even if you own a business and you're never going to be using LinkedIn for career, for reasons, your team should be using LinkedIn, whether it's about advertising your business or promoting your business or organizing events or, you know, hiring or, and so you should be you know, not a specialist or an expert, but you should definitely encourage employees and your teams to leverage the platform to to better job, to be more effective. I have heard that companies and uh, brands are really pushing employees and Mm -hmm. certain um, organizations here are pushing employees to repost work things because then there's more of a leverage when it's shared by a person personally. Then I think it can then be inauthentic because they're then pushing that you must post this, you must post this. Where's the fine balance between an organization to go, we want employees to engage, but don't repost everything because that's not your voice as well. Brands and marketers, they figured out that uh, this authentic, you know, voice, that this authenticity is a very, very important thing. And obviously it's a fact nowadays that um, social media have been you know, used very well by marketing and marketing teams and brands. And people kind of turn away from really corporate, you know, branded uh, content. And what works the best and what gets the most engagement is is the authentic content from people. 
So clearly nowadays, even marketing teams are leveraging their own employees or their teams to use as a relay so they can share that content. It gets more, let's say, more you know, rich and visibility. The still the problem is that this comes from the brand. So the main, the main idea here is that the ideal uh, scenario is when companies, of course, they produce the, the con- corporate branded content and they use that on their own channels. Yeah. But they will actually also help executives or employees with, you know, giving them content they can tap into depending on the situations, you know, their roles, uh, their priorities, what they want to do. And they can personalize it, customize it. Mm. So then you don't turn every single employee as a content creator because it's not the role of the employees. But you can actually, from a marketing standpoint, a corporate standpoint, you can actually at least save time and educate and help them by giving them bits and pieces of content that is, you know, it's not going to be 100% authentic because it's not going to come from them. At least they can pick and choose. They have the choice and they can customize it and they save time. Yeah. And you also give them some guidelines on if they want to create something from scratch for them, talking about the team building or whatever, you know, the office life or meeting a client or whatever. They know the code for using LinkedIn to to talk about it with the right tone and the right, let's say, you know, uh, guidelines. So at least it's, uh, it's uh, you know, posted as effective as possible and they, they get the right reach and so on and so forth. So yeah, that's the idea. You want to actually help employees with saving time mm. and making you know this content as authentic as possible and aligned with the corporate branding rules, let's say. But instilling their voice and yes, their tone rather than just... I think that's one thing that I get a bit frustrated with is just a simple repost. Yes. I think, like, I feel that that's... I don't repost, either repost it, but add your opinion on it yeah. or just don't repost. What, what's your take on that? So reposting basically from even an, a LinkedIn algorithm perspective is actually bad because it just gets a tiny, tiny, tiny um, boost in terms of the reach and the visibility of that post. Mm-hmm. So what you want to do is either help the team with bits and pieces of content they can actually post on their own profiles. Mm-hmm. And the second thing is that um, there is now a new way of using LinkedIn for uh, using the company tab on the company page where any brand can actually recommend content to their own employees. And only employees with a valid email would be able to see this content. So no one else can pretend, you know, they are employed by the company and see the content. So you have to have your validated corporate email to be able to see the content that the marketing team is recommending. Mm -hmm. And then basically you just see it and you pick and choose and you just post it as an original post coming from your own profile. Uh So you don't have to post or repost or share. Yeah. You can do that. It helps the brand and the content posted on the page. But from an employee perspective, you know, tapping into that library of posts that is curated by the marketing team and available on the My Company tab will allow you to save a lot of time and you can post it in two clicks and you know, add your perspective. So it saves you a huge amount of time. And the nice thing as well is from a marketing standpoint, the team can actually see, the marketing team can see the analytics of those curated posts that they made available and how many people are posting it and so on and so forth. So you can actually see from a, let's say, consolidated view, the 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 the, the performance of the post that you recommended to employees mm. in one go. Kind of just staying in that sort of employee perspective. Sure. One of the questions I get when I'm working with clients on their sort of personal brand strategy, and obviously we discussed LinkedIn as one of their platforms, is they get really nervous to post on it because they don't want their boss to think that they are skiving or yeah. having loads of time off. And where's the fine line between educating the senior team or sharing content that doesn't look like you're not working because that one client in particular goes well i can't post five times a week because they're going to wonder why i'm not working and i i my my sort of slight argument is to that well but you can plan it at the weekend and and there's content on that but people seem to be really worried about what other colleagues are going to to judge about them if they are posting yeah what's your thoughts this is this is a first for me the most 
for me, the, the, the number one reason why people kind of tend to be concerned is, um, you know, if I'm actually more active on LinkedIn, my management will think I'm looking for a job. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's also something. But when it comes to the time question where it looks like you have too much time on your hand, I will say, I mean, it's, it's clearly lack of education because if you knew, yes, people sometimes can take over, like they can take so much time on creating just one single post and others can post like in two minutes. You, you have like, you know, those ends of thoughts during the week where, you know, whether it's a comment, whether it's a perspective, whether it's a comment on an industry news or something that happened in an organization that is definitely worth sharing and, you know, like, um, because it's good for other, other people to know about it. Um, and seriously, sometimes it takes literally two minutes. Yeah. So it's really not a question of... Uh, you know, if I post once a day, it's going to be perceived as I'm spending my time on LinkedIn. So educating, you know, other people on, on what's the benefit, how much time it takes. For example, like just recognizing a, a team that did a great thing or project and just posting about it on LinkedIn saying, you know, glad, you know, proud of my team. They did this or so it was a great result. It's great. Mm -hmm. And the team will see it and all the people in the organization will see it and maybe all the clients and so on will see it as well. So at the end of the day, it takes literally two minutes to take a photo of your team and then post about it. Yeah. And it's great for the, wow. for the brand of the team, mm -hmm. for yourself and also for you know, recognizing the team uh, publicly. What about the other one then, the, about the people thinking that you're going to be looking for a job if you're spending some time of it? What do you say to that? Unfortunately, the, the, the bad perception or the, the wrong perception about LinkedIn, it's still not, a lot of people still consider it's a job board. And so they have this perception. And so anyone that is active on LinkedIn seems to, you know, to them, that appears that that person is looking for a job. But actually, in the contrary, that person might be developing a personal brand that will benefit the organization because they will be attracting, you know, candidates more effectively. Mm. Uh, when they're looking for, you know, someone, they might already have a good reputation. So then it will be easier for candidates to turn to them or they might already have a pipeline and so on. Recognizing the team as well is very right, important, you know, because obviously people will stick to you if they, have, they feel appreciated. So there is a lot of uh, reasons why um, employees or leaders should be using LinkedIn to post. And it should not basically be, you know, badly perceived as, oh, he's posting because he's looking for his next play. Yeah. And, you know, there are so many reasons why you can post. It's about customer, you know, recognition, re customer recognition. It could be uh, employees. It could be uh, promoting your uh, service or, you know, testimonials like industry news, thought leadership. You can't just associate everything with just the fact that you're looking for a job. Everybody's open. Yeah. Right. But you need to actually also help employees and leaders with talking about you, shining through, you know, their, their brands. So then it reflects on you as well. If you are an owner, business owner or leader, you know, you rather have the empl your employees that are visible talking about you in an authentic way. It will generate business to you and talent to you and promote you and your business rather than keeping all your employees for yourself, but no one is talking about you online. The perceptions of what to post. I think this is also an interesting aspect. Kind of going back to people either think it's finding a job, but one of the interesting aspects I found is the more personal posts. And when I say personal, things yep. that are potentially related to achievements through work. I mean, that's yep. good. You know, milestones in Dubai, uh, milestones for, for birthdays, they always perform really well. Yep. But one that surprised me the other day was my fiancé actually came to hear one of my talks and I headlined it, Take Your Fiancé to Work Day. And then I had gone into sort of talking about it. So it was a picture of him and I. And then it was, this was the first time we've had a long distance relationship, first time he's been here in person. And then I related it back to a question, you know, do you actually know what your other half does? Yeah. Post outperformed anything that I've posted in the last, I don't know, last 12 months. And I've seen a sort of movement towards more personal pieces performing much better than I mean, work stuff. Yeah. I mean, look, I mean, a, a, a network like LinkedIn is your, you know, is, is, is uh, mainly based on your contacts, your, your network. 
right? Like Twitter, for example, it's followers, right? But LinkedIn is, it's your contacts, your network. So those are people that you connected with and you accepted to connect with mm. at some point. They, you know, you might have inbounds, people requesting to connect with you. They will not be your contact until you also accept. So ultimately, your primary audience on LinkedIn is actually your own network. People you know, you met, they know you and so on. Let's not forget that. It's not an audience. Marketing people tend to think, you know, like, let's use social media for, you know, promoting and, and talking about myself or my brand and, and so on. But on LinkedIn, people that are your primary kind of like on the first line, they are going to be your contacts. So if as soon as you start posting about something personal, it's normal <laughs> that uh, they, you know, you'll have a lot more engagement. Um, but also it's right, meaning like, can you imagine if your contacts are hearing you talking about your brand all the time? It's going to be boring. Mm. So you have to mix it. You need to talk about, you know, industry trends or your business. But as soon as you talk about that personal, they will relate, you know, they will, they will like it. Mm -hmm. they, they, now this is the Kelly I know, right? So that's the whole idea. It's, uh, you know, you need to mix the brand stuff, the business stuff, but also like the personal stuff once in a while. Because then your actual network and the contact you really know personally, they will actually like, yeah, that's, you know, I can, I can, I like that. Trust. And that's usually, and this is the authenticity we were talking about earlier. Yeah. I always talk about personal brand. When you develop your personal brand, it's a trust accelerator. And I see that LinkedIn is a huge platform to be able to develop your trust because you can do it on multiple levels. Here's me as a professional. This is my expertise. Yeah. This is what I can talk about. And this is me in a personal sense. What are some of the other mistakes other than mistaking for actually what LinkedIn can be used for that you see clients do on a regular basis? They just talk too much about their business. So they don't mix it uh, in a balanced way. Mm -hmm. um, so they will basically just promote. Um, so sometimes you will have people who just curate content from industry news, yeah. websites, blogs, and they just keep posting about that. So that's wrong again. Uh, other people will just talk about their company again. Um, so yeah, very, very having like, you know, this kind of being mindful about balancing it and having, you know, maybe once uh, like three posts a week, for example, where you have one personal, one about your business and one about the industry or something like that. So just being mindful. The second is uh, main perception is... Um, just considering LinkedIn as a, as a let's say, audience uh, social media channel. Uh, again, uh, the power of LinkedIn is in the networking. So you can actually talk and post regularly, but if you're not, let's say, accelerating the success of whatever you're trying to do by engaging, meaning like, you know, reaching out with messages to people. Yeah. Um, looking at who has reacted or engaged with your own post. Mm -hmm. There might be people you actually know, they might have commented, and if you ignore them, it's 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 a shame. Um, and also there's the content of others. You, you can see the, one of the, let's say, mistakes that I see all the time is people are self-centered. They just plan their LinkedIn, let's say, strategy. They, they have amazing profile, they have content and so on, but they just miss out a big important piece of the puzzle, which is basically, you know, engaging with others that you are net networking with, you know, so looking at what others are posting mm -hmm. and you engage on that mm -hmm. because this will accelerate your success on LinkedIn rather than just, just posting about yourself and having an audience, engaging with clients, prospects, customers, people in your network, influencers that your peers their content and engaging on their content, relaying their content will actually increase also, you know, this kind of gratitude effect from them as well. So you're more likely to have, you know, people passing the balls to you and then you can actually just, you know, they will actually accelerate your, your uh, content uh, success as well. So leveraging other people's content and engaging with them as well is actually a very, very important piece of the success that you can get on it. Rather than just being a, a viewer 
a voyeur looking at everyone that doesn't actually do anything and then wonder why you've got no yeah. results. So either just a viewer or just a content creator, like really centered on you mm-hmm. and just creating your own content, but not really kind of engaging with others yeah. as well. Is there an optimum time to to post, you know, other platforms are like, it's all about consistency, consistency, consistency. I always encourage my clients to do at least three times a week, but it's about trying to find a happy medium for them yeah. as well. Um, I'm up to posting four times a week, possibly five, if I've got enough content. But I have podcasts. There's lots of things I can post. Is there an ideal time? You will find, uh, you know, you can easily find online uh, some some ideal times because social media management platforms, they will have all the data from all the users posting on LinkedIn, on Twitter, and so on. So you can figure a bit best times that way. But usually on LinkedIn, it's going to be in the morning. People actually checking their LinkedIn feed yeah. and checking when they go to work. They just have a coffee and they just start with that, checking their platform. Early during the day, work days, mm-hmm. or uh, around lunch times, this, mm-hmm. is, this is the best. You're right, it's consistency. There's no point posting once randomly at the right time, it's better just to post, you know, regularly. And even if it's not really perfect, at Amazing. least there is the just consistency just... there. Yeah. And do you think three times, five times, or is it down to just actually quality rather than quantity? Well, of course, there's quality first, of course, but uh, um, the quantity matters as well because there is a uh, there is a, a nice now way uh, when you actually go to LinkedIn and you activate the... Um, um, the content creator mode, yeah. then you can actually see the performance of your content over a week, two weeks, you know, 30 days and so on. So if you look at it and, for example, you post once a week, you will see a massive spike on that day. And obviously what, you know, what I'm saying to customers or prospects uh, or people in, you know, during seminars and so on is that when I actually show them and they ask me the questions, how often should I post? they can see like posting once will actually just increase massive visibility on that day. And so obviously the answer is like, well, how often do you want that? Mm. Do you want it three times a week or do you want it five times a week? Yeah. So if you have the time, that is where you need to kind of like adjust and you need to schedule your, you know, kind of like plan your your, your week ahead and come up with this, those ideas. And then if you have five a week, of course, it's going to be, you know, you basically double pretty much compared to three times a week. So it's obviously the quality will make sure that there is engagement, there is reach and so on. But if you are not great in quality of the post, at least posting once a day is going to definitely beating someone that posts once, but amazing. Yeah. So that's, you know, again, consistency is key and posting maybe once a day is the best you could do Mm. if you have the time and you have the, this is the, this kind of consistency. Yeah. I love now though that LinkedIn has a, introduce scheduling on the yes. their app. I mean, what a game changer. It was always quite frustrating trying to find a platform that would actually allow to schedule, I could do, but also schedule videos for LinkedIn yeah. was really challenging. So yeah, yeah. super happy about that as well. This, I've seen quite a lot about becoming a top LinkedIn voice. Yeah. So if someone's wanting to be um, seen as a thought leader, I think that word's kind of gone around a lot. I want to be a thought leader. I want to be a thought leader. How, being a LinkedIn top voice, I think, is a great way for your personal brand. How would someone become a LinkedIn top voice? So, I have no idea. <laughs> so, I'm way far from it. The main thing here is that obviously LinkedIn has got ways of knowing uh, from the analytics side uh, which who are the people in a specific market or industry that are generating as many views as possible. And they will actually see if there is consistency, if it's aligned with their guidelines and so on. And they will just approach the peop, you know, the person. I think it's just a matter of, you know, being consistent and having like finding your audience and getting great kind of engagement from an audience and then building it. And over time, LinkedIn will approach you for sure. Yeah. They have like programs for content creators and so on. You can, I'm sure you can apply to them to at least be on their radar. But they will only approach you if actually, you know, you're doing the right things. And, and, and so it's not rocket science. Three people who are really taking it seriously and super consistent and fi- having a great voice or a different voice. If you're doing something that is, you know, 100 people have done before you and they already have like on their roots or on their kind of like portfolio, a lot of content around that. Mm. 
they're not going to approach you. But so you need to find your, you know, angle. Uh, but yeah, it, it's just about, again, consistency and, and getting there. Yeah. What is your thoughts on paying for premium? That question I get all the time. One of the strengths of LinkedIn is like the value you can get for free is massive. For someone to find a job, it's kind of like life changing kind of situation, right? So you can actually get a job for free on LinkedIn if you are doing the right things. And that's pretty much set up for your life or financially or whatever. The value is tremendous and you can get so much for free. If you're in sales, you can use LinkedIn for free. You don't even have to get a premium. At some point, if you are using the platform really well and you're consistent and you feel like, okay, now I'm kind of limited because I would like to go a bit faster. I would like to, for example, message people that I'm not connected to yet. So then it will make sense to use premium. Mm -hmm. You want to have a bit more analytics or insights when you check companies or people, or you want to see who's viewed your profile and you don't want to be limited to 10, then you can get premium. But for, for, for most people that I'm, I'm talking to, they don't do all those things for free even. Yeah, yeah. So start with doing the things for free yeah. that you can get great value from. And again, you need to have your weekly plan or little weekly routine things to check you know, on a weekly basis. Okay, I checked my viewers and I reach out to the people that make sense. So I checked you know, my stats or I checked uh, uh, insights on companies or I'm doing my research when I reach out, blah, 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 right? I'm actually sending connection requests on a regular basis to the people I want to meet and so on. But then if it's not going fast enough and you want to get more data, then you can upgrade to premium. Mm -hmm. And obviously before, before even upgrading to premium, you have to look at the corporate solutions. Because corporate solutions are meant for companies. So there were recruiter for companies to recruit. There's sales navigator for companies to you know, equip their sales team for prospecting more effectively. There is even actually the advertising for marketing teams. But LinkedIn now has developed solo versions of those corporate tools. Yeah. So you don't have to be a company to get recruiter now. You have a recruiter light, which is a different premium, but it's kind of like for individuals. So before you consider upgrading to premium, find out what exactly what you need from LinkedIn. Is it for hiring? Is it for prospecting? Mm -hmm. And then instead of upgrading your, your profile to premium, you might be better off just getting Sales Navigator. You will get a lot more, va more value if you are in business that Roman role and you want to use it for analytics or for uh, prospecting and so on. So premium is really, for me, get as much value out of LinkedIn for free. Mm -hmm. Then if you want to upgrade and you feel like limited, there is premium, but there is also other options that you need to consider because you might get actually much better uh, results with maybe Sales Navigator or, or other tools than Premium. Yeah, that's really good advice. I had a great success story with a client, so I'd love to know one of yours. I'm going to share what happened with Barbara for those that maybe haven't heard mm -hmm. it, but she was a client of mine and we were initially working on our personal brand strategy for her coaching business and then she lost her job. So this was very much about how do we develop your personal brand on LinkedIn to help you find a job and mm -hmm. we kind of moved from our coaching business. So I suggested that she buy well, kind of different steps. So I suggested she go and buy hirebarbara.com and she create a website with all her achievements and her personal brand credentials on it to make it different. Then step two, I suggested that she go and create a video and share kind of, okay, it's been, I think it was two or three months by the time she got around to recording it, that she'd lost her job, be authentic, share it, but use the platform as a network to ask, does anyone know of someone in learning and development? And can mm. they support her? And she, she did an remarkable job. She's a real action taker and she did all of that. So currently to date, it's had 4.6 million views. And out of the back of that, she had kind of 60 or so, I see kind of job interactions, opportunities, not all interviews. Can we have a chat, a coffee here, there? And then she updated me just last week saying that the person who offered, who saw initially saw the post was based in Australia. So she's based here in Dubai. Who saw the post was in Australia and told her friend who was here in the Middle East, check out this profile. Like that is the power of LinkedIn. And she ended up getting a job, you know, and, and that is what I love about it. Have you got a story that you can share with me of someone personally, professionally that have really maximize the platform like you see using all the free resources because Barbara didn't have the 
Mm. The premium, it was all free. When it comes to the networking and the content traveling, for sure, uh, what people need to realize is that uh, you know, 70% of the people seeing a post, for example, are not even connected to you. They are not even in your first degree connections. So when you actually post on LinkedIn, it's going to be viewed first to by the people you connect with. Based on their engagement, it's going to be traveling t- towards people who you don't even know about. So for sure, that's great. Um, so in terms of the stories for me, when I was working at LinkedIn, I was mainly uh, helping uh, companies uh, hire. So my customers were actually companies recruiting. I remember, for example, like, I mean, how many times... Um, People were using it rarely um, and or they were just testing and they were getting so much better results and that be, because they were just, you know, um, hiring, ending up hiring people out of just simple, simple searches. The value or at least for companies uh, using LinkedIn were tremendous as well. You know, even if you just post job or you are looking for People you know are very, very, very difficult to find. And you know that if you post a job, you will never get the right candidates. But the ability you have to look for, the right candidates, filter, and so on, and then you know, reaching out, if you hire one person, it's like saving so much time and money. So I've got plenty of examples. Like I've got plenty of examples of you know, salespeople who are just reaching out. So for example, like, one of them to be super concrete is like a Welsh person. And I told them in a sales training that um, you can search for people by nationality on LinkedIn. So then you can actually just find anyone in the UAE who is actually your, you know, having your nationality. And then you can obviously narrow it down to people who are in your, the current role, like the right role, the type of people that, you know, the right business, the right industries and the right functions in companies that you want to actually have a conversation with. And obviously, by adding the the filter or the layer of the nationality, you can find people who actually come from your uh, your country or you know maybe the the region or your city and so on. And that's a massive icebreaker. So the idea is that within a week they already had a meeting, they already met someone that you know was your potential prospect within within a week. So, I mean, there are plenty like yeah. plenty of stories you can imagine. Uh, working, I've worked LinkedIn six years. People coming to me saying, you know, LinkedIn changed my life. Uh, I got this job thanks to LinkedIn, or I, you know, or I got this client thanks to LinkedIn and things like that. And obviously, after after leaving LinkedIn, now I, I'm in the business also of helping, you know, businesses with LinkedIn. I've got plenty of examples as well. My big thing is that I just want people to understand that there's so much power in it. Yeah, it's the one platform that I feel so many people that I speak to are reluctant to go yeah. on and they go, I don't know how to work it or I, I don't think it's for me or my clients aren't on it or or even from the perspective of corporate, you know, you've got the, oh, well, I don't want my employees going on it yeah. because people might steal them or, you know, yeah. there's a number of different things. Yeah. So kind of what would be your sort of last piece of advice to someone listening that's still not convinced yet about LinkedIn. I don't know how, because I think we've given so many valid points, but... So, yeah, I mean, look, um, it, it's 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 going about, back to the, the business goals, right? I mean, nowadays, think about it. No one would argue that Google is useless. You can have a website without Google or you doesn't make sense to have a website. So everybody would agree that to have an online presence is important, right? You can be successful and not having a website, for sure. But having a website is going to help and it's going to make you even more successful. So the whole idea is that this is online and this is Google. Of course, it's important. LinkedIn being like the network it is today, and it's a people to people before business to people business. And obviously in a B2B world or B2C world, and we see a lot more brands that are B2C going on LinkedIn as well to Mm. just reach out to this audience of professionals or executives and so on, right? But when it comes to B2B, it makes 100% sense to actually be on a platform where you have pretty much massive visibility on who is working where in any organization you want to target. And 
you actually have the granularity of knowing, you know, their past experiences, companies they worked at, what they are interested in, who they might know that you know. All this information is unique to LinkedIn, not Google. Google cannot have it. Facebook cannot have it. So as a business, if you're not using LinkedIn, and you, you know, it's, it's a missed opportunity. Maybe, maybe other people, if they're using it better than you, they will actually have a massive advantage over you, competitive advantage over you. It's only beneficial if you actually know how to do it. So that's the main thing. And also what's super relevant to UAE is that UAE is in a position that is quite unique in the world where maybe 80% of the people you, you go in the streets and then you see in the streets are on LinkedIn. And this is the, the highest in the world in terms of the number of professionals working in the country that have profiles on LinkedIn. It's better than US. It's better than some other countries, uh, English-speaking countries. So UAE is really like a massive opportunity for companies to actually, and people, professionals, to actually be on a platform where, you know, most people are in the country and you can easily find the right people. And so we were talking about career or jobs. Posting is great, but actually just leveraging your own network is actually so, so important. Mm. Like people you know, you know, is good, but who they know is even better. So really tapping into your network and discovering who they might know who work in the same industry or the right companies or the right brands, that's super key. And leveraging LinkedIn is like unique. This networking effect, you will not have it on Facebook or Google and so mm -hmm. on. It's, it's really unique to LinkedIn. And it's fantastic if you know how to use the search tools and your network properly. And so content is great but, and posting is great, but leveraging LinkedIn data to be able to figure out who you should reach out to and so on. That's, this is a key. That's next level. I love that tip. Before we get into you sharing details about how people can find you on LinkedIn, sure. um, I always like to end the show with a couple of personal questions. Now, you have no idea what I'm going to ask. Mm -hmm. There's some cards here. I'd love for you to pick two or three cards in front of you. You can pick them up and you can answer them. Can I can push this? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. So first one. Yeah. So I spent too much time. That's it. Yeah. And you've so got I to answer need it. To finish. Yeah. Ooh. So I spent too much time. Um, so this is quite personal, but I, I think sometimes I care too much or I try to do um, too well. So I spent too much time on the details that sometimes no one is going to look at or no one care about uh, because I want to get things done perfectly or to my expectations, yeah, which are yeah, often yeah. very, very high. So this is... I love that. Good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next one. So when I was young, I would spend hours daydreaming about... Daydreaming, basically one of my um, early kind of dream or... Uh, goals in life were um, on my business. So I really wanted to, you know, I was very scientific minded. I love the math. I love the science and all of that. And until I actually spoke to someone who was in finance, in executive in finance, and we started talking about startups and so on and business, I realized the power. I mean, you know, it's great to do what you love, but do what you love, like being free to do what you love when you are an entrepreneur is like, you know, really great because you can be in the job, you can still do what you love, but if you have a boss, uh, it's going to be hard. So being your own boss in a way is like the best freedom, kind of the best luxury you can have in life. And that's what I was dreaming to, to, to achieve, like to be my own boss. And here we are. Yes. Tempted to break my own rules when it comes to, I'm not sure here. I don't know. I don't know how to answer this question. <laughs> I, I don't know if I even if I have rules. Like uh, I'm not really yeah. structured to the level where I have rules for myself, right? So I'll say it's not not applicable. Yeah. Very good. How can people get in touch with you? Obviously, let's start with LinkedIn and the platform, sure. and then uh, anything so, else you can share. Yeah, if you, you you can find me, I'm sure you can share the link. But uh, yeah, Guillaume Laronde, uh, Extra Mile, you will find me. Uh, if I did a good job uh, in uh, optimizing my profile. <laughs> Otherwise, if you search for extramile.me, which is the website, yeah. you will find my website. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you all for come me. together. And uh, thank you for being on the show. Thank you.